In America, there's a variety of visas, especially when it comes to work, but there's one unique work visa, the O-1. And this has an alternative option, especially when H-1B fails. And we're gonna break down the most common questions that you guys have asked about the O-1 visa here in America. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. I'm Rob, and at Chine Coaching, we love helping guide international students and professionals to success in their cross-cultural journeys. And I'm super excited to be answering these questions with my onk about the O-1 Work Visa, a great alternative in America. And stay tuned to the very end because we have this bonus lightning round of a bunch of extra questions. And these are all questions that you guys have submitted that commonly get asked to my onk. And so these are gonna really help you consider a very great potential visa career option for your future here in America. Mayank, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hi, Rob. I'm I'm Mayank. I came to the U.S. as an international student back in 2017. Been working here in Seattle since 2018 for the last four years. Been at small startups mostly and had some visa challenges last year. Luckily, I've navigated through all of them. And here we are. Fantastic. Well, the first question we got submitted is how many papers, citations, and patents do you have? Well, Rob, I actually have zero of what? Zero? All of them. <laughs> all of them. Yes. So the category that I applied for requires a lot of significant business contributions. I'm lucky to have worked at a lot of small companies that have been working on products that haven't existed before. So the angle that we went for was having significant business contributions, which means that I was a very critical team member in the company working on that specific product and I was required to be there for that product success. And that's kind of the angle that we went for and everything else was pretty much supporting. So yeah, you don't have to publish all these papers or have patents or be an Einstein, you know, to qualify for this Owen visa. And the next question that we got that people were asking is, what are the chances, you know, what is someone's chances of actually getting an O1 visa? Well, Rob, what do you, what do you think? What, what's your guess? I mean, I know like with H1Bs, lots of people apply, don't get it. Um, I don't know. I, I would think, you know, it's at least under 50, so maybe like 30, 40% or something like that. Well, Rob, again, to blow your mind, it's over 85% of Whoa. people that get, yes. And, and the reason that happens is because Yes, it does have an extremely high bar, but a lot of people get turned away just reading the website and looking at all the requirements. Mm -hmm. And the second set of people get turned away by the lawyer. So your barrier to entry here is finding a lawyer that's ready to take your case and fight that case for you. But once you have a well-crafted case, the chances of approval are extremely high. And of course that number varies throughout the years, but those are the numbers from last year. So if you're willing to do the hard work and you've got a good lawyer, immigration attorney working in your corner, and you actually get to the submission process, it's an 85% chance of approval. That's incredible. Yep. So talking about building that profile, one of the questions we got is, how good should someone's profile be to have a good chance of getting an O-1? And what specific criteria is being used to determine that extraordinary ability? An individual must either demonstrate a one-time achievement, which can mean having an Olympic medal or a, or a Nobel Prize, or they need to satisfy at least three of the eight criteria that USCIS mentions. And all the eight criteria are on their website, but they range from having internationally recognized prizes, uh, being a member of a really prestigious association, having material published about you, or having any material that you've published, being on a panel of judges, judging the other people in your field, having any original scientific discoveries or business related contributions that are of major significance, serving in some kind of essential capacity in, in the company or at the institution that's applying for your visa. And then the last one is commanding a really high salary for your services. So you need to meet at least three of the criteria. A strong application will have maybe four four and a half of these criteria. So lawyers will tell you that you need at least three of these criteria to be really strong with your application. Each of these criteria can have one or two instances of evidence that shows that you have that particular criteria in your application. So that means you can show more than two or three prizes that are nationally or internationally recognized. 
you want to have at least two or three major publications that are written about you or your work. You need to have at least one or two significant business contributions. If we get into the more academic side, that criteria is way more stringent. There are people that have 10, 20, maybe 40 citations or more, almost a dozen patents. So the criteria is a little different for that, which I'm not completely well versed with, but that's kind of what my lawyers told me. Okay. Well, we know that immigration attorneys play a huge role in this process. So let's talk about that real quick. What kind of role does the immigration lawyer play and how do you choose a good one to work with? So the lawyers have a couple of interactions with you. And the first one is doing an assessment whether you will qualify for an O-1. And they will send you worksheets. They're there to guide you through the process of what you need to find and how you organize all your data. And once you've done that, they will review all of the information that you've given them and try to find some angle for your story. Once they do that and everything's good to go, they will start filling out all the forms. They will start requesting recommendation letters from all of the people that you've listed. They'll start crafting those as well. Once that's done, you need to go back and forth with them to make sure the content is right, that you're happy with the story that they're trying to find. If you have any additional evidence that has come up while they're preparing the case, you let them know and they will spend some time crafting those 600 pages. Just 600 pages, no big deal. Yep, it's a lot. <laughs> awesome. My friends, as we talk about work visas in America, including the O-1, I want to let you know about an amazing resource which is just coming out, uh, the book Unshackled, which is being written by my friend Sundaria, also known as Pooja. She's partnered up with an amazing immigration lawyer, Samir Kedekar. This book Unshackled is about answering your questions of how do I navigate the immigration system here in America to go from where I am to where I want to be. So whether you're on an F-1 visa wanting to start a company, or maybe you're on an H-1B and maybe you want to transition to an O-1 visa like we've been talking about in this video. This book is meant to share all the paths ahead so you can make the best decisions for your career and future. We're writing an all-in-one companion guide for immigration so you can know all the paths available to success here in America to achieve your goals. They're building a community along with the book to meet thousands of other readers and get to talk to them, connect, learn from each other, They'll have weekly webinars, office hours with immigration lawyers, in-person meetups, and get to connect with best fit lawyers who can actually help work with you and get you to where you want to go with better visas and better work opportunities. So they just launched the pre-orders for this book and the community on a platform called Kickstarter. And if you go ahead and order it today, which I've already done, then you're actually going to get early access to a chapter on getting your ON visa before anyone else does. Really, really cool. So to check out this Kickstarter launch page, go to readunshackled.com slash Rob. We'll have that link for you guys in the video description. And to get your copy, to get early access in the O1 chapter, and to learn about this community and special resources as well. Check out the book Unshackled. It's going to really help you out. Another common question we got was, how can an average student improve their profile to that you know really high standard of expectation especially maybe for a newly admitted student who's just beginning, how can they get a head start? I can speak from my field and people can get as creative as they want. But if you're a student, for example, studying computer science here in the US, a couple of things that you can do since you might be off for 12 to 24 months is you should be looking for every single opportunity to do something on campus. So for example, if you have hackathons at your college, you should participate in them and try placing first or second in one of those. And if you don't have a hackathon, you should go organize it or be a judge at one or find another hackathon that's nearby. The second thing that you should do is network, network, network. You never know who's going to come in handy in the future, who will agree to write a recommendation letter for you. For example, I got recommendation letters from investors that I've met over the years that have known me for my work and have seen me excel in the last three or four years. So you need to build those relationships early. The third thing you can do is start finding ways that you can publish articles, start writing, start trying to get some online presence for whatever you have to say or whatever your skill sets are. And the last thing I can say is collecting all your evidence and start organizing it. See what categories you're missing out on and brainstorm ways to meet those criteria and take action on that for the next 12 or 24 months. Ask your friends, ask people that have gotten this kind of visa before, see what worked for them, 
see if you have opportunities to get your foot in the door to meet that criteria. Do a lot of research, basically. Fantastic. Yeah, a lot of great things you can be doing. Um, a lot of very easy things you can begin doing, especially as a new student, even before you graduate. So, Malik, another great question we received is, what does the green card process look like after getting an O-1 visa? One of the things that is very important to understand is getting an O-1 doesn't mean getting a green card is any easier. It does not play any factor in the green card process at all. The only thing that it does is it helps you find that evidence and build that case for you. And you can use that evidence in your green card application. So most people that apply for an O-1 can try applying for an EB-1A, which is the equivalent of an extraordinary visa for green cards. And a lot of the evidence is the same. It's scrutinized way more than it is for the O-1. But if you had strong evidence for your O-1, you can reuse all of that for your EB-1A application. You can use all of your recommendation letters. They might need to be tailored a little bit to be an immigrant petition but you can reuse a lot of this content. And usually what lawyers will do is they won't use all of your evidence for your O-1 because they want to make sure that there are some things left for your EB-1 application or it shows that you've grown since then. But a lot of it's very similar. So you can use a lot of things that you've learned in your O-1 application here as well. The other thing is applying for the EB-1 application is similar in the sense that you can also file for premium processing and get an answer for your petition relatively quickly. And then getting the actual green card after that can take a couple of months or maybe a year, but that's the same as any other green card application. It's the initial petition that takes the longest time. And since you've done all the hard work of getting the O-1, you can try to fast track that from five to 10 years to less than two months. Yeah, so definitely an advantage compared to the H-1B when it comes to green card. Yes. My friends, if you were learning a ton and getting some value from my be sure to hit that like, hit that thumbs up button to say thanks to my onk, sharing his wisdom, answering these fun, helpful, tough questions about the O-1 visa. And our chat question for you guys is what else do you want to know about work visas in America? Go ahead and tell us in the comments what other questions do you have? What other things do you want to know about work visas in America? We want to go ahead and answer those in the comments or make some other videos about that content as well. So let us know your questions. Let us know your thoughts. And now it's time for the bonus lightning round. We got a few more fun questions, rapid fire. So Mayank, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Does a company have to sponsor the O-1 visa? Yes, they do. Can you apply for one yourself? For the O-1 application, no. But for the green card application, yes. Okay. So it has to come from the company to apply for that sponsorship. Correct. How much does it cost for an O-1 visa? So it costs about $2,000 in fees and premium processing fees. And then it can range anywhere between five to ten thousand dollars from in lawyer fees depending on which lawyers you go with and then if you do get requests for evidence on your application a lawyer might charge another two or three thousand dollars to fight that rfe for you so you're looking at a ballpark of ten to twelve thousand dollars and how does that compare to the cost of an h1b an h1b depending on which employer you go with can range from three thousand five hundred dollars to maybe six thousand dollars so it's about double the cost a little okay. over double but definitely worth the cost <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and once you have the Owen visa, how long is it valid for? So it's initially valid for three years, and then you can get one year increments indefinitely. And is there any, any cap, any expiration date? There is not. So you can actually hold multiple O1s as well, unlike the H1B. So if you have multiple engagements, you can hold multiple O1s at the same time for each engagement. And they're valid till the end of your engagement or indefinitely. Has there been any differences between the previous and current government administrations here in America in terms of evaluating the criteria for an O-1 visa? The evaluation for the O-1 criteria hasn't changed much, but the lawyers did tell me that they were seeing an increased number of RFEs in the previous administration. It didn't mean that the approval rates decreased. It just meant that the government was scrutinizing the applications a little bit more or was causing the process to be prolonged, but the approval rates didn't necessarily change that much. That's good to hear. Ma, what's the final encouragement you would give to people who are considering pursuing an Owen visa? The thing I like to tell people is you should apply for it, or you should think of applying for one regardless of where you are, even if you're on an H-1B or not. And the reason is because in the virtue of trying to build your case for an O-1, 
you will meet so many interesting people, you will find so many new opportunities that it will help build your resume regardless. So it doesn't really matter whether you apply for it or get it or not. You will be in a much better place after you've gone through this whole exercise than you did before. And hey, if you get the O1, it's even better and that's the cherry on top. But you will benefit out of this process regardless. Wise words, I like it. My friends, we've made another separate video with my uncle telling his whole journey, his process kind of A to Z of why he had to pivot uh, and what allowed him to help get that O1 visa. So be sure to check out that other video as well, covering different things that we did in this video. So super helpful. And my uncle, this was amazing. I learned a ton. Thanks for asking so many of these questions that our friends submitted and giving valuable advice. Thank you for having me, Rob. My friends, don't forget to check out Unshackled, the new book by Sandaria and Samir. Again, to help you guys figure out your visa and immigration journey, check it out. Read unshackled.com slash Rob to go to the Kickstarter page to pre-order your book, get great resources, and join the community. Again, be sure to come with us online, on social media, on Instagram, LinkedIn. Make sure you're subscribed to the Chai and Coaching e-newsletter as well. We really appreciate you guys hanging out and being part of the Chai and Coaching community. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.